This is Chris and welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna to talk about the TCP trace graph. So go ahead and get out your copy of Wireshark and follow right along. So in this video, again, we're gonna talk about the TCP trace graph. You can follow along with me by downloading the demonstration trace file in the links in the description down below. So go ahead and do that and you can follow along. So here in our trace file, it's just a simple file transfer between one endpoint and another. So here we have one station at 192.168.1.1 and the other 10.001. And here's our handshake and then data begins to go in flight. Now this capture was taken on the 192.168 side. We can see that because we have our round trip time measured between the SYN and SYNAC. So our round trip time or our latency between those two endpoints is about 80 milliseconds. So what the TCP trace graph helps us to do is it takes data going in one direction and it graphs out sequence number over time. Now, again, we've already seen that with the Stevens graph, but the TCP trace graph gives us some extra information that's very useful in troubleshooting. Now, keep in mind, when you're using the TCP trace graph, you have to select a packet that's going in the direction of data flow. In the opposite direction, you just have empty acts. So we don't want to select one of those. This graph is going to show us data in one direction. So let's go ahead and grab a large data packet, one of these big ones, one of these 1460s, or on your screen it might say 1514, just depending on what length you're showing. Right here I'm showing the TCP segment length instead of the whole frame length. So I'm going to grab one of those larger packets, going to come up to statistics. Let's go ahead and drop down to TCP stream graphs this time, TCP trace. I'm going to go ahead and expand this out so we can make that full screen there. Now, as you'll see, there's lots of small pauses in this file transfer. It's like data goes up slightly, then pause, up slightly, then pause. In fact, I'm just gonna zoom, and I wanna go into the very beginning of my data transfer. So in this graph, the dark line, that represents data. So as things are going up and to the right, that represents my sequence numbers over time. So I have a small amount of data go, and then I wait one full network round trip, then I see a few more, data points go, a network round trip, a little bit more, and then I see that congestion window begin to build. Well, what's nice about the TCP trace graph is I also see, in addition to sequence number over time, I also have this green line. What that shows me is 10001, the receiver. It shows me his receive window, that TCP receive window graphed over time. So here I can see that about the fifth round trip, my data goes in flight, and I can see that, that those dark lines there almost touch that green line. So what that means is I've sent out enough data to basically fill the receive window on the other side. Now keep in mind, this doesn't mean that the receive window on the receiver has gone to zero. But what this means is I have enough data in flight to fill that window. This means that the sender has to stop. I can't send data beyond that green line. And if these two ever touch, that means the sender has to completely stop. And then I have to wait until more receive window opens, giving me more space to send data. Now the line below, that brown line, what this represents is data that is acknowledged from that receiver. So when I see this go up, what that means is whatever data was sent that corresponds at this level with this line, what that means is that that was positively acknowledged. So for example, this data right here, I don't see that acknowledged until I see the corresponding brown line over here to the right, wherever that is. Let me zoom out just a little bit. Just hitting the minus key right now. So this data right here, I don't see that acknowledged until I see the brown lines for it over here on the right. Now, a lot of times that is my network round trip time between those two points. So here with TCP trace, we have the receive window that's graphed out that green line. And that shows me the amount of space between my data and flight and how much room I have to actually send more data. Now in this file transfer, I'm just gonna go down here to reset, just to, to reset my view here. And I'm gonna make sure I've select zoom again. And I'm just gonna zoom in one more time on one of those bursts. So here what I see is that my data in flight, as soon as I get more room in the receive window, data is immediately being sent by the sender. 
And then as more data is acknowledged, I get more receive window. It's immediately filled by the sender. So what this shows me is I have a receive window limitation. You see how I'm always hitting my head on that green line. That means that that green light is limiting the amount of data that I can put out there in flight. And this is a common thing to see when we have a low receive side window, when it's simply not large enough to take advantage of the network. Remember, I have 80 milliseconds between these endpoints. So every single one of these lines that you see go flat, that represents 80 milliseconds. That's lost throughput simply because I can't continue to transfer because of that low window. So let me take a look at the drags and I'm going to select a point on this graph and let's actually go back into our trace file and take a look at it at the packet level. So you're back in my trace. I can see, and I just selected a point on the graph. Here I can see data went in flight or this is my bytes in flight. This is a value in the TCP header. You can take a right click it and add as a column, something I use quite a bit. Now I can see that my bytes in flight, 211 kilobytes. Now on the receive window, if I come over here to calculate a window size, I've also added that as a column. And I can see on the receiver, he only has 212 kilobytes, about 213 kilobytes. So my sender is sending as much as it can before it gets less than an MSS worth of space between what is outstanding on the wire and what that receiver can possibly handle. So this is what's making our sender stop we don't have any more receive window to work with. So in this case, I would wanna see that receive window go much larger. That way we can put more data out on the wire and we can start to see some space between those dark lines in the TCP trace graph and the green line up above it. Now I went ahead and opened up the other trace file that I shared with you and this one is client loss. So in this transfer, Basically, there was just a small amount of packet loss in the file transfer. So unlike the other one where it was nice and clean, no retransmissions, no black lines, red letters, this one had some packet loss. So let's see how TCP trace can help us to diagnose that. I'm going to go to statistics. I'm going to come down to TCP stream graphs. Let's go to TCP trace. Now we're going to see something that looks a little bit different. We definitely see that similar behavior where those dark lines are hugging that green line up above. But you can see here these red lines. So I'm going to grab the zooms radio button and let's dig into those red lines a little bit. Now what these show us are SAC blocks. So what this means is that I lost a packet and data continued to be acknowledged or new data that came in while we were indicating which packet was lost. So if I take a look at that first red, those bars right here, and if I go in really close, you're gonna notice down here on the bottom that there's a space here. That space represents the missing sequence numbers in the stream. So right here, the receiver is indicating, hey, I have this gap here, but I successfully received the rest of these packets. So I'm good with these sequence numbers, but I have a missing space there. Now just to the right of that, you can see there's a little eye bar. So the sender got the message, it saw all those dupacks come in with a SAC block, and it said, hey, you know what, I better send out that packet. It retransmits the packet, and then time continues. Now keep in mind, this packet goes in flight, so I have to wait at least a network round trip before I see this brown line acknowledge that it happened. So I'm just gonna go over here to drags, and I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit. Now there's my missing data there. New data was coming in, so that was positively acknowledged. And what I wanna see over here to the right, let me back out just a little bit more. And what I wanna see is the point at which that brown line catches up. So let's go to zooms. Gonna zoom in right here. So here, these were all selective acknowledgements. These were all uh, dupacks coming in and they were indicating that one segment that was lost. Well, that was sent, and now as soon as the brown line is contiguous, there's no gaps or spaces or missing data, that's where the brown line goes up, and now everything is caught up to that sequence number over here on the left. Now we see, along with those acknowledgements that came in, not only did I see that data acknowledged, but that also allows my TCP receive window to advance, and now more data can go in flight. So the TCP trace graph shows us SAC blocks. 
Now that can get really interesting when we have several gaps in our data stream where we have a lot of different spots where sequence numbers went missing. We had packet loss. So the TCP trace, it doesn't just show us sequence numbers over time. It shows us the receive window. It shows us positively acknowledged data. It shows us SAC blocks and where retransmissions happened. So it shows us quite a bit more information that can be really critical when troubleshooting. So hopefully this video helped you learn more about the TCP trace graph and how to use it to troubleshoot file transfers that are slow between two endpoints. Thanks for stopping by my channel and we'll see you again for more Wireshark and tips in packet analysis.